So, an introduction. Uh, Jack and Gabriel. Uh, Jack from the world. And, uh, of course, Gabriel from the world, too. But I just arrived in Santiago about four months from uh, Beijing, China. Uh, Gabe, I'll let you introduce yourself to the, the audience. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Gabriel. I'm from Chile. I'm Chilean. In fact, I'm living in Santiago since my born. Um, my English is not so precise, so it's not very, very good, but I'm trying to do my best effort for Jack and for you both. So, if there's any word that you can't understand, try to excuse myself. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gabe. So, what we're going to talk about tonight is a little bit to do with my new service that Gabe knows about, Pairing Today. Uh, which is a website, www.pairingtoday.com. And we're going to discuss relationships and uh, in, in actual uh, relationship, in this case between men and women, because yeah. uh, Gabe and I are both heterosexual. Uh, but um, what, what I was going to bring up about this, and it's, I never see relationships thought of as a, a means of a free trade. And what I want to do is explain my viewpoint that love, in fact, is the ultimate and highest free trade in the world. So what you're actually trading are values. Love is the trade of values. This is, I was gonna ask you, what are you getting, you know, what are you getting from her in return for what you're giving her? I mean, what do two people who are so-called in love, what are they trading, finally? I say they're trading their own personal value, their own personal worth. This is where I'm bringing this in. I, I, I seldom ever hear this. Rand comes the closest to defining love like I do, and that love is a trade of values. It's a free trade of values. In other words, look at it this way. You fall in love with someone that has a set of features, characteristics, that you love, that you're dearly attracted to. And if you're more mature, it's just not a physical thing, or it's just not they're a millionaire. It's the sum total of who they are that attracts you. Hey, you know, I love her mm -hmm. as much as, and even as a never no one will love her. Mm -hmm. How you can, how you can uh, value how much love you are offering good, to good. the other one because in exactly. the case of money you mm -hmm. can you say you hey you I want one thousand right. one hundred thousand or good. whatever good but but good, good. okay here but here's love, the, yeah because someone mm -hmm. will say hey I made I, I, I gave her all the love that I have mm -hmm. all my my because my love values is a subject is self subjective value it's not objective you value your love of me if I'm a woman but I don't value your love. Because your love is just subjective. Yeah. You can't objectively measure it. Okay, that's, now, that's right. But we can measure it this way and only this way. And this is where I bring the free market in. If I were the woman, maybe like Elisa is, your girlfriend, and you value who I am, and you value who you are, and it's an equal, intimate exchange. This is what I try to teach and enable people to achieve. You've got to have equal value and equal power and control to have the kind of highest relationship, and that takes maturity. And just being in love, I say, I love you, that's not love to me, that's sex. You're talking hormones, you're not talking mind. So more than that, what I'm trying to get at here is that really what we're trading is our personal value. Yeah. And we learn how valuable we are to ourselves if that's actually objectively validated by the other one. I would know, um, I can't remember. Yeah, there's a great, uh, I mean, true love. Mature love is the great venture of life, the great adventure. So I use the metaphor of the, the sea of life. And I say, each of us is a boat. You're a boat. You're a ship. You're a ship. I'm a ship. We each have our own ship. And there's two kinds of relationships. There is a friendship and there is a partnership. Now, each of us is a life ship. We're all individual bodies. And 
I use the metaphor of the ship is the uh, the captain, the pilot, is our mind. Our ship is our body. Our motor is our gene machine, our sexual drive. That's our motor. Our rudder, the steering wheel, is reason. So we must use reason to guide our life ship wherever we want to go on the sea of life. It's a great venture. We're born on the sea of life. I mean, I love looking at it in this way. It's, it's an incredibly beautiful metaphor to So me. the most important thing, and probably the only thing that, in, that is valuing life, is this adventure with someone else. Exactly. That's exactly it. So imagine, extend the metaphor. You, uh, as Elisa, Elisa has her life ship. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel has his life ship. You're both on the sea of life together. If you are in a friendship mode of relationship, you're both separate boats and you're together, like you're going to travel to Europe, and you're each in your own uh, life ship, and you travel side by side, and uh, maybe it'll last through Europe, and maybe you'll come back and say, hey, it's been wonderful with you, and, uh, but in the meantime, maybe you'll have met someone else that's, oh, even more interesting and more fulfilling to you, and maybe she will, or maybe both of you will say, no, wow, this is what, geez, Gabe, uh, geez, whoa, you are the one that holds all of my values. You are me as a woman, and I am you as a man. You are my highest value. I value you actually more than I value me, which is what a free trade is. I trade myself for you, you trade yourself for me because you are the most valuable thing in the world and you increase my value because you know how valuable I am. You objectify my subjective value. Oh, God, I see it now. You, you validated me. I finally found someone that knows me, understands my value. Yeah, 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 that's it's me. For me, it makes sense, guys. I don't know if you are uh, with Jack, but I'm totally with he So let's sense. continue the metaphor. Okay, you're, you're, two you're two life ships, and you've chosen to have a friendship, which means you sail side by side. The other relationship is the partnership. Yeah. And there, you decide, both of your life ships, you build, create a partnership that you take your life ship and you put it on top of the big boat and she does hers and she puts it on top. That for, for, third ship is the partnership that contains both of your life ships or together. understand your idea, for example, in your case. Guys, I already know that you have these four relationships, right? So, in your case, these four relationships were uh, partnerships? Yes. Okay. All of them. So it means that you have you have had the same ideas, the same objectives in life, and it's like sure well, part of life. Yeah. Sure. Excellent question. My first marriage, I was only 21, 22. Okay. I didn't know who I was, and she didn't know who she was. And you need to know who you are before you can have a true partnership. We married. And I think we were as self-aware as most people of our age in, in the 60s, more than most, I would, I would think. She was an actress, I was a poet. But we didn't really know each other. And so we really did not have a partnership. We maybe thought we did, or I'm not even sure if I, you know, back then what I thought. But we, we didn't have a partnership. We remained in two life ships, sailing side by side. And suddenly it became obvious to me that I wasn't getting what I really wanted from her. I became, she wasn't enough. And I realized this and I left her. And that's what I've always done. If I don't find I can get enough, so I, I always put it this way. And I always loved her and still love her to this day. And I tried to tell her this in my own youthful, dumb, maybe arrogant, ignorant way that I will always love her, but I must go because I, I, I don't have that freedom with you that I, I need and I want. Uh, but I'll always be there, and I came back to her, but she was too hurt to really allow me to come back. We made love after that, and, you know, she would do this and that, but obviously 
she didn't want to continue the relationship, so I had to break it off. So we didn't really have a partnership. We, we were two life ships. Now my <clears throat> my second wife, my I grew from that. I learned from that relationship. My second wife came with two children, and I was a lot older, so I was more mature. And I thought we had a partnership at that point, as much as I could have imagined it. Now I was only. Uh, 38, I think, at this time, 37, something around there. So I was still learning. So one of the things I want you to understand is that we have to learn. No marriage or truly permanent, initially, with a good heart and good mind of good people, which I am and you are, is ever a failure. Even if we get divorced, it's not a failure. We're learning from that if we're good people. And so that's why any relationship I've ever left, whether it's a boyfriend or a marriage, I've always cared for that person and always left the door open and that I would always come back and take care of those people. And I meant that and I have proven that to myself. So, but with the second wife, I was better. I, I was more responsible for my freedom. And this is what I've always learned. I need to be responsible for my freedom. So I learned more with the second marriage. But again, our partnership broke down. I took my life ship off of the partnership and the partnership sunk. Now, do you... So, so, so okay. sorry. Uh, okay. uh, so, if I understand you, you're proposing that probably your partnership will be increased um, during your life. For example, my partnership won't be the same at my 20s than my 30s, Absolutely. than my 40s. Yeah. And you may have to sink three or four of those partnerships for, before for, you get, before one, you that, get one that actually yeah. holds you up on the sea of life. And this is okay because we learn by doing, we learn by making mistakes. And that's the creative adventure. This is what I want pairing today to get to all of you to say that it's a great adventure. It, it, you know, it, and if we, you know, it, if we do part and each go our own way with our life ship, it's not the end of our life. It's it's a new beginning, and we should love each other and care for each other as best we can. I know it hurts, and I'm even not after, saying it doesn't. Even after the Absolutely. Once your life ships part, you know, and, and again, using the metaphor, remember with the partnership, one plus one makes three. Yeah, okay. With the friendship, one plus one makes two. You stay separate. Yeah. But you can have committed separateness. You can commit to Elisa, you will sail together in your life ships for maybe two, three years, and maybe it's beautiful. But you don't want to commit to a partnership, and that might be wise. Or you might say, let's commit to a partnership, then you'll find that third ship that you've built, and of course it's imaginary, but the relationship must become more important than each of your life ships, yeah. or else it's not a partnership. Yeah, yeah, of you know, because obviously with the partnership, you steer your ship, she steers her ship, but when you put both of your life ships on the partnership, both of you are captains with only one steering wheel. Yeah and only one carrying hold that carries the two of you. Yeah. And that may run into the iceberg of the Titanic and the whole thing may sink. Yeah. And then it's very, very painful. But that's life. Yeah, yeah, and you learn life. from that. Yeah. Those icebergs are out there. Actually, I love that metaphor. I just yeah, man, and you just yeah. let it yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, just, what, what would be the iceberg? Well, you know, we'll I, I mean, if we would extend the metaphor, we're, we're, the you, you, for you example, and Elisa are, are, are in your partnership in the Titanic, you sail. Okay, I think, beautiful. for example, yeah. um, the iceberg will be, for example, uh, something that you want, she wants, uh, and I don't. For example, like, uh, I don't know, if you want to try uh, to... to live outside of the city, for example, and for me, being in the city is the most important thing because I love the city and I work here and whatever, probably that would, would be an iceberg for us because we are looking the, our, our life, we are trying to make it in a different part of the, of the country, of the city, probably. So, um, it's like my values or her values change. Yeah. So yeah. then, when there's a change, a big change, it becomes an iceberg. Yeah. So probably you can use the word like change, propose a challenge, and if you can't meet that challenge, meet that challenge, then 
then you're gonna find an iceberg. Yeah. It's like talent is an iceberg. Good, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. it, and you don't need to run into it. True. Yeah. I mean, True. like you and her using your example. Okay, we want to move outside. If it's going to threaten the partnership, you both bring it out on the table. And this is what I, I do with pairing And we try today. to find a way. Yeah. You say so. because. Really, in the end, any partnership exists if it's a true partnership, which means you want to be there because it brings you joy in your life. And anything less than that is not, to me, a partnership. If you're just making do for security reasons, that's not a partnership. That's a hospital ship. That's, you know, it's two wounded people yeah. on yeah. a hospital yeah. ship. So if you, if the potential iceberg you see out there is this shift of, of, the, of the geography of where you want to be. If you value the partnership more than what you want, and she values it more than what she wants, you will make the sort of compromise that is not a compromise. You both will be happy to do it because the relationship is more important than your life ship or her life ship. Yeah. The third is more important. Yeah. But there could be another situation that would be even more challenging than that. What might that be? Than wanting to leave, to go. I mean, what's the one thing that breaks up most? Having two breaks. Well, even more than that. You're married? No. No, I mean, in the sense, you, you both had said you're exclusively sexual to each oh, other. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. lover. Yeah. yeah That's course. what breaks up yeah. most so-called partnerships. Yeah. Where if you have the kind of partnership where it's not polyamorous or poly polygamous, you know, po polygamous means multiple lovers or po polyamorous means multiple lovers. If you enter your partnership on the contractual agreement that you don't have any other sexual affairs, I don't either, and you both agree to that, it's a contractual obligation, then you do, or she does, then for most people this is really a terrible hurt and it could sink the ship, right? That's the sort of iceberg that sinks most partnerships. But does that have to? I'm not sure. Yeah, this is an interesting thing. You see, to me now, it would not sink my partnership at all. I'm convinced of that now. And for but many you years, are, you are saying now that in, in my your, in your yeah, age. And, and even up even up till even say in my late fifties, it wouldn't have sunk it. Like with my fourth wife, if she would have had an affair, that wouldn't have sunk our ship. And that's why you 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 are not value sex as the most important thing in yes. the relation, right? Yes, okay. exactly. Sex is not the most important. Sex is and, an expression. And you can you can you can understand or you can allow this this other partner of sex or partner sex of your of your in this case of your of your girl of your woman. I mean, I think. Do you think this is part of the life to try to get with someone else that your that your is your partnership? Well, you, you see, I, I would now, and I, when, when I work with couples too, I say I think you should, the first thing that you should be negotiating in your two life ships is to consider the partnership, is that let's understand what we both want out of here. Do we want sexual exclusivity? You know, and you've got to be very honest about that. And then you also talk, what will happen if you or you know the other one has this is this you know you try to think about this before you even go into it and so for me having your partner if you had left it more or less open you know where you said we will be sexually exclusive but maybe we would have a very special thing that As long as we were honest with each other and you told me about it, I could maybe accept that it would be very painful, but we have to talk about it, you know, and, and we have to be honest about it. Or even better, you would be polyamorous, polygamous from the beginning and say that, you know, I'm not looking. And this is the thing, because most young people, I think, who are polyamorous or have multiple sex partners, both the male and the female, it's that the sex is still driving. 
and they want another sex partner because the one they have isn't enough. And while that can work, if you're honest with it, it still is immature. It's okay. still then the dictating, the dick is dictating and the rental wound is, is, is pushing you. But that can still be possible. So, I mean, all of this, there, there's no hard and fast rules about this except honesty. And then care. Um, that, that, that there's no, you must be honest. And you can still care for someone even if they've allowed someone into them other than you. Yeah, but this is very difficult, and it's interesting how men and women respond differently to being unfaithful. You know, assuming that you've, you've got a traditional conventional marriage where you say, no other sex partners, then one of you betrays, we say in English, the other. And of course, the woman is hurt differently than the man. Generally, the woman wants to know, are you got an emotional attachment with this other woman? Is she going to take you away from me? That's what she's worried about, and that's where her jealousy. The man is just is about, angry. Uh, what they what, what they do with you? What exactly. you with me, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, what was he? You know, he put his penis in you yeah. because he got a big. Yeah. yeah. Is it bigger than mine? Yeah, is it better yeah. than me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So very different things are available here, but still, again, it's showing you your immaturity, and that we can all learn. I I don't think anyone is mature until they die. And that's it. You know, even if you even if I live to a hundred, I'm still going to be learning. And my last, my fourth marriage was such a disappointment to me, and I, it was so painful that, in one sense, I failed, but in another sense, I didn't fail because I learned a lot from that, and it made me stronger. Although for two, three years, it was a, it was hard. It was hard. So I think all of us have to approach it in that way, and using that metaphor that. If we're going to have that partnership, then we should, before we do it, should we be sexually exclusive or should we not? And if we should be, why? Talk it out. Use someone like me as a sounding board to really get this out. Because for you, for you, look at for you, it's not obvious. It's something that you have to talk about. It. I think. Okay. Don't you? I don't know, I think, but the thing is that for me, I, I'm, I belong to this culture, Latin American culture, um, and here it's like a um, principle, it's like, a, obviously, most of the people doesn't, doesn't uh, question about, uh, people that don't, don't, you don't ask yourself about if you can have another partner or not. It's like you just if you if assume. you are if, sorry, if you have if you're in a commitment with a woman or with yeah. a man or whatever, uh, then it's like a, a result uh, that's obviously that is going to be your your only one partner. Sex but partner. do you see the problem of that? Remember, I said assume, ask you and me. Yeah, yeah you yeah. make assumptions and it's disastrous. Yeah, that's yeah. inviting the iceberg. Of course. Of course. So I think. You should, with like pairing today, you should get something like the Prepare and Rich in, uh, inventory, or I have many tools that you can use to know each other's values. That's the core. You really have to know ahead and try to get examine as many different situations that will challenge, as many icebergs ahead as you possibly can see, you need to think about it ahead before you decide even to have your partnership. If you don't, you're going to hit one of them sooner or later, and probably sooner or later. So I think anyone at any age, whether they're in a temporary situation or a permanent, going for a permanent partnership, should be asking these really deep, specific questions. Do we want to be sexually exclusive? If so, why? Why do you want that? Why do I want that? And as a man, at 29, my dick is still talking pretty big to me and is a big, you know, I see that beautiful woman, you know, so I'm going to have trouble maybe controlling this, but I want to be honest with you, so I might need your help to help me control this. And in fact, I would talk about this. Do you, do you know horses have blinders? Yeah. I would say to men, including myself, I think you should put blinders on. And when I was with Catherine, who I, you know, was my partner, and we had a partnership, unbelievably so, I would say, 
I'm putting on my blinders, dear. You know, and that beautiful woman, I see it, and I can admire that, but I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. So I'm not going to allow my dick to talk to me. I'm not going to allow my dick to be the great dictator. So I could control it, and I did successfully. And I think most men that are mature enough to do that realize it's of greater value than just slipping your dick in for one night. It's probably not worth it. So you can control it, right? Yeah. If you can't, well, then you take the results of that. Sure? Yeah. 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 Well, guys, I think time to go. We finished okay. for today. All right. So it was uh, a great meeting. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, thank you, Jack. A pleasure. Okay. We'll see you again. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys.